everybody, and welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're taking a look at Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, book one. And here it is, folks. This is Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, book one. This is our overview. This just came out this week. Look, there's a nice one on the side here. This collects Blue Beetle 1 through 12, spinning out of Infinite Crisis. I think Infinite Crisis number 4 or 5? I want to say it was 4. 3 or 4 or 5, maybe, was his first appearance. And then he launched into his own series with the One Year Later um, series here. I picked up this book on a whim back in the day when it was first coming out. And I love this story. This series ran for 36 issues. So if this is book one, it ran for 36 issues. That means they could collect it all in three books. Although I do hope that they go past that as after his 36th issue of this series, um, there was a, a series of backups. And um, in I think the Booster Gold title, and kind of finished up this era of Blue Beetle. So this Blue Beetle is Jaime Reyes. He is an all new character from, I don't know when, when this was, 2008, 2007. And <clears throat> it's written by Keith Giffen, John Rogers, kind of teaming up in the first couple of issues here with art by Cully Hamner and Duncan Rollo. Uh, Cully Hamner is the one who designed him I love this costume design. I think it's fantastic. And I mean, obviously they are releasing this book because they have the Blue Beetle coming movie coming out next year. Starring, uh, gosh, one of the kids from the Karate Kid uh, Cobra Kai series. Which I have not watched, so can't. Um, I don't know who exactly it is, but I'm excited for it. Looks like they've had some costume shots from... Um, you know, set photos and stuff like that, and it looks pretty dang similar to this. I mean, his costume hasn't changed a whole lot, and, and DC has really been pushing Blue Beetle ever since he appeared here. Um, he was on here, and then he has first, like, TV appearance with The Brave and the Bold, like the first episode of that series, that animated series with Batman, kind of that 50s vibe he was in. Uh, and then he shows up in Young Justice, and he's been in a whole bunch of other stuff. He's had three other series after this one, actually. Um, including this one in the New 52, which only ran for, I think, 20 issues or something like that. I have, there's It's two volumes, one through six, and maybe it was 18, 16, something like that. It wasn't that long. Uh, and then there was a DC Rebirth series as well, drawn by Scott Collins, uh, and Keith Giffen returned for that one. This one is by Tony Bedard and Iguata. But uh, this, is, this is pretty good. I like this. But it doesn't really hold a candle to the original stuff. So everything with the Reach, like if you're watching Young Justice Season 2, it's very Blue Beetle-centric. The Reach comes in that show and um, <clears throat> kind of takes over like that storyline. So for Jaime Reyes to get such a spotlight in Season 2 of Young Justice was fantastic for him at the time. And I hope it really builds his character. This was like one of the newer um, superheroes we had seen in a long, long time at that time. And for him to be a young Hispanic man living in El Paso on a border town, uh, this story directly deals with, you know, things like gangs, immigration, that kind of stuff uh, from the perspective of a young teen who's living in that city. Surprise, surprise, this is the first time I ever saw Peacemaker. Yes, this is Peacemaker, the Charlton character uh, who was most recently shown, uh, portrayed by John Cena in the Suicide Squad and the HBO Max series, Peacemaker. You can tell it's Peacemaker because he's got Peacemaker on his arm over there. But yeah, this is the first time I ever saw him. So to see him show up in the Suicide Squad with John Cena and some goofy helmet was kind of news to me. Um, but this Peacemaker character is kind of a guide to Jaime Reyes a little bit as he kind of navigates the what the heck is going on. Um, the Scarab is talking to him in some weird language. He can fly. Um, originally, Blue Beetle has these wings that like basically look like a shield kind of thing. And then eventually later on in the series, they kind of change it up to where it's just more like a bug's wings than these like giant um, glider kite things. Uh, 
and it's later, and I think it's in this book too. So Duncan Rouleau comes in as guest artist for a couple issues here, and um, they draw the shit out of it. So one of the most fun things about Blue Beetle is his supporting cast. You got Paco, his best friend, uh, La Dama, who is the villain, and her, I think it's her niece, is also one of Blue Beetle's um, buddies. I can't remember her name. Uh, anyway, it's very, very fun. And it's just kind of this whole drama of, hey, I didn't realize your aunt was a bad guy. And, uh, you know, is she a bad guy? She kind of is, kind of isn't. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on in, in this book. And I really did enjoy <clears throat> rereading the first 12 issues here. Uh, I actually read them on my iPad because I, I had bought them all a long time ago and was rereading them. Um, and it was really cool. So this, this issue is kind of like some things that happened in, in like before Infinite Crisis. Because when we meet Jaime Reyes, we meet him kind of uh, right after he gets his scarab. He's already got the costume on. He doesn't really know what's going on. So this issue kind of explains how he got it and appeared in um, Batman's cave in the midst of that Infinite Crisis event battling the Omax. Uh, really fantastic story. So... I guess this is the paper DC's going with their new trade paperbacks from now on. This kind of, it's very thick matte paper, um, not glossy, but it is, it does feel high quality. So that's nice. I think the one drawback of this paper is that it makes these books really, really thick on your bookshelf because it is a thicker paper. Like my, me, myself, I kind of would prefer if uh, they went back to the glossy paper that they had in like the 52 trades and up until a couple of years ago. I mean, this is six issues. Look how thin that is versus this 12 one is, is pretty, you know, it's a little bit thicker uh, if you were to double this one up. So I th that's due to the paper, choosing this thicker matte paper, but it is a nice presentation. Everything is really printed nicely uh, and stuff like that. So anyway, there's a whole lot of fun going on here with Blue Beetle. Uh, later on in the series, Duncan Rouleau kind of sticks around. Um, Cully Hammer kind of takes a, a sabbatical and comes back every now and again. Uh, this is when the Reach comes and you discover them. In the very last issue of this series, and they kind of introduce themselves as the people who made the Scarabs. All this, of course, tying into not Ted Cord, but uh, Ted, basically. the or, uh, what, what was that guy's name? And with the original Blue Beetle from like the Charlton era. But um, <clears throat> he's kind of cool. So you got some... Character designs, some sketches. Some of the stuff I think we'd seen before, but it's nice that it's included in the back here. But um, anyway, the, for me, this series really takes off when Raphael Albuquerque comes on and uh, takes over as the main series artist. I think in the, probably, it'll probably happen in the next volume if they end up do collecting it. Uh, and he sticks around, I think, till towards the end of the series. And then I believe the backups in that Booster Gold stuff was drawn by Mike Norton. So I hope that everybody goes and seeks this out. This is a really a, a long lost uh, book. It hasn't really been reprinted or anything like that. So to see it kind of getting a spotlight and getting a book one, hopefully they will do two more. Um, they, they kind of stopped and started with some of these, you know, um, we haven't had a Jeff Johns uh, Green Lantern volume in a while. They stopped the Kyle Rayner books after book two. And when they probably could have gone for like eight or nine. Um, so it just depends on if people pick this up. So uh, go and seek it out. I promise you, you will have a lot of fun with this series. It's great time, great writing, great art. It's a fantastic little fun story. And this is the, the, the Blue Beetle that you should read if you want to get to know the character before his movie comes out next year. This is the original run, the origin st original origin story. It's not the retooled origin in here in... Uh, the new 52 series, although this is good as well. I, to me, this is the classic Blue Beetle. This is when I first attached myself to Jaime Reyes and uh, his phenomenal friends. So really excited about this book. So hopefully they continue it for the rest of the run. Uh, and if not, I guess I'll just have to track down those other issues. But uh, yeah, 36 issues total. So one through 12, we could do three, maybe, you know, four more volumes, or yeah, three more volumes, maybe two if you go... If you just do the main first 36 issues, that would be fine. But there's some stuff in the backups in the Booster Gold run where they introduce the character called Black Beetle. And that ties into a whole bunch of other stuff. So I really don't know 
how they would collect that because it kind of ties into a whole bunch of books at the time. But at least if we get three books out of this, uh, three trades to complete that initial run of 36 issues, that would be fantastic. Um, Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, book one. Go seek it out. Phenomenal book. Really recommend it.